Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 36. Zephaniah being the 36th book of the Bible. <clears throat> now what we're going to read is, uh, I believe, three times in the Bible. Here, Second Kings, and Jeremiah. I believe this is recorded. Maybe Chronicles. Not all the same things are recorded in all four Gospels of the Lord Jesus Christ. But here is a story that appears at least, I believe, three times in the Bible. Got to be something important. Got to get a study. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be shamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. There's something here that God says, hey, I want it in my Bible at least three times. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah. That Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came against all the defense cities of Judah and took them. So here comes an invading army of Syria into Judah, and the Syrians get a, a victory. And the king of Assyria sent Rapshika. Rapshiko, or he, yeah. Now this guy is trouble. This guy has got a big mouth. From Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army. So King Sennacherib sends Rakshika to Jerusalem in Sennacherib's absence. <clears throat> and he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. And it could be marked on the, on the map. Then came forth unto him Elkiah, Helkiah's son which was over the house, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. So these are official men of the king. The recorder, he's going to take down the, the, the conversation. He's going to write it down. This is how we got it. The, the, which is over the house. The one he, He's in charge. And Rabshika said unto them, Say now to Hezekiah, so both kings are absent. Sennacherib and Hezekiah are not present, only the men of the kings. Got to be something to that. 2 Kings 18, 13. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria. And great, we're going to see, he's been in a lot of battles and a lot of victories. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Now, this is Rabshika, you know, he's opened up his big mouth. He goes right, but then he goes too far. I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counseled and strength for war. Okay. He's been a mighty man of, of victory. Now, on whom dost thou trust, that thou rebellest against me? Well, Really rebel against Sennacherib, but we'll overlook that one. You're just a messenger. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken weed on e Egypt. A reed is nothing. A little tiny thing. And if it be broken, it ain't no use. Whereon, if a man lean, you go to lean on it, it will go into his hand and pierce it. Ouch. I'm going to give you a sore. You won't be able to use your hand. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. Okay. God told Israel not to run to Egypt, and the Syrians don't have too much good to say about Egypt. <clears throat> but if thou say to me, here we go, we trust in the Lord our God. It says it on our money. Is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away? No. Those are the altars of the false gods of Baal, of all the G-O-D-S, small g. You got something wrong there, buddy. So Hezekiah cleaned the land for the, for the Lord Jehovah. 
Rab Sheikah is like, didn't you get rid of your God? And said to Judah and to Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar. Yes, that's the altar that's in the temple. So he's got a no and he's got a yes in his question. He's half right. Now therefore give pledges. Give us money. I will pray thee to my master, the king of Assyria. You know, America's giving pledges to China, nations of all this world, to keep them away. What would happen if we stopped giving China money? One particular 50 state store would probably close right up. Because they wouldn't give us anything to sell and buy and all that. I pray thee to my master, the king of Assyria. I will give thee two thousand horses if thou be able to <clears throat> if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon. Sarcasm, I, that's what I love. I'll give you two hundred I'll give you two thousand horses, but can you put men on them? He's making fun of Israel. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants? And put thy trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen. You're running to Egypt. You're not running to us. The Syrians were fierce. They weren't you, you little simple little army men. They were fierce. And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? Well, I have to wait for tomorrow night. Why that out? The Lord said unto me, "Really? Go up against the land and destroy it." We'll have to see that tomorrow. You know, the Bible says, "If a man's a prophet and the words that speaks out of his mouth does not come so, he's a he's a liar. He's a false prophet. He's saying God gave to me. Let's destroy this land." Um. I think Hezekiah is get, trying to get the land right, and when you try to do right, up steps the enemy. The enemy will try to get you to do it. Well, you know, I was told. And he won't even speak to Hezekiah. Then said Elkiah and Shebna, I paid this stuff. No, what you said. And Joah and Repshika, speak, I pray thee, unto thy servants, these men just mentioned, in the Syrian language. Oh, so these men had knowledge of Hebrew and Syrian. You know, those dumb Old Testament people that didn't know nothing. But we understand it, and speak not to us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that, st that are on the wall. So Repshika knows Hebrew. And what he just read to him, he just spoke to him, was in Hebrew, and the people on the walls are understanding. But Rab Shika said, probably in the Jewish language, has my master sent me to thy master, to thee, to speak these words? Has he not sent me to the men that sit on the wall? There they are, they're listening. That they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? And Rabshika stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. He's going to blow his mouth again. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. That's true. That is a very true statement. That is 100% true. Man can't do nothing. Then he puts the other foot in his mouth. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Uh-oh. About to wait till tomorrow night. It gets even better. The Lord shall. Sh the Lord will surely deliver us. He's mocking God. 
He's not saying the Lord will surely deliver us. It's, you know, the Lord is surely going to deliver us. That's what Hezekiah is saying. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. You don't trust your words of your king. The king who, who's cleansing the land. Who set up the one temple. The one offering. Hearken not unto Hezekiah. For thus saith the king of Assyria. Make an agreement with me by a present. Well, what kind of agreement is that? Giving God gifts. Listen, if you're going to make an agreement with somebody with, with presents, what happens when your enemies give a bigger present? And you'll see over and over in, in the Old Testament, this nation gave this nation money to fight another nation. And then that nation gave the, the nation more money and returned the battle against the nation that brought the, gave the first nation. And eat ye every one of his vine, okay, and every one of his fig tree, okay, and drink ye uh, every one the waters of his own cistern, okay. I'll leave you in the land to eat and to drink. Okay, does that sound good? Hey, hey, we're still going to be in the land of our fathers until I come and take you away. Uh, what? To a land like your own land. Well, why would they leave? Deportation. Captives. Yeah, sign me up on that one. Where, 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 where's the where's the sign up sheet for that one? A land of corn and wine. A land of bread and vineyards. And what's the hidden cause? Listen, we're told that Egypt has cucumbers, melons, leeks, but they also had rigor service. He's trying to make it, you know, he's trying to make the deal nice and fat. Beware, least Hezekiah persuade you, saying the Lord will deliver us. There he goes, mocking God again. Has any of the gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Absolutely not, because they're not gods. Now he's comparing God, Jehovah, with little gods. This guy is opening up his foot and stuck in his soul into it. He's messing with the Lord God of the Hebrews and ranked on him. What do you think his end's going to be? There, there was, there was a nation that came up and fought against Israel and lost, and they said, "Well, their gods be the gods of the of the mountains, and let's go down the valley where our gods in the valleys are stronger than the, their gods in the mountains." God said to the king, "You just don't worry about it. I'm going to kick their butt, and you're going to win because they said their gods are better than than the god. You know, God don't like to be compared with other gods." Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? They weren't gods. Because you see, it see, it says small g o d s. That means they're not gods. Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? That's that was Israel North. You see what the testimony of, of being supposedly a child of God and serving other gods. That it causes Rabshika, a foreign nation, to say, hey, where is your brother's God? Aren't you a family? Aren't you the same? Didn't he have calves and, and Dan and Bathsheba? And... Hmm? Samaria is the capital, was the capital of Israel. And Assyria took him captive because of all the wickedness that God had done to him. And God sent Assyria into Israel to be conquered and made captive because of their sins. And now here it comes back to bite Judah in the butt. You know, there's some people you talk to that you say, Shh, don't tell anybody you're a Christian. Just be quiet. 
Don't be going quoting scripture around. Don't you be saying it because you know you're a poor testimony. And God in heaven hears it. Who are they among all the gods of these lands? It would be Palestine. Yeah, I mean, gods there are. That have delivered their land out of my hand. They weren't gods. He was relying on people and he was stronger than the people in one. It wasn't a God to God contact. It was a man versus man and the bigger man won. Not God. Now, Rabshika and Sennacherib is going to do battle against God. And then they're going to find God versus man. And we'll find out in a couple of nights. That the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, doesn't say God. The Lord shall deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. He's quoting Hezekiah. He's taking the very name Jehovah and using it as, as sarcasm, as in mockery. I mean, if if Hezekiah would call his God Jello, he would say, you know, deliver the other hand, and that Jello should deliver Jerusalem. He is using the name of the God of Hezekiah as who is he? That's why you see the capital L capital. He's Rabshika is not honoring the God of the Bible. He's just quoting the God of the Bible. But they held their peace. These, these are the people on the wall, and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, "Answer him not." Hey, they're obeying the king. What do you think Americans would do? Man, they'd be open up their mouth. What well, did Rav said? Hey, turn into your guns into us. And, and the king gave order, don't you speak to him. Man, they'd be, oh, my, take my guns over my dead hand, blah, 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 blah. Say one thing about the, the Jews under Hezekiah. They followed his command. Then came Hilkiah, the son of Hilkiah, that was over the house, and he's in, he's in charge of everything, the household, and Shema the scribe, and Joah and the son of Ahaz, the recorder, to Hezekiah, with their clothes rent, and told him the words that we just read of Rashika. And we'll pick up what happens with, with uh, part two, tomorrow night. This same Bible, Hopefully this same time, Lord willing. You, you think God's going to let this man get away? How many people have spoken like Rabshika and mockery and sarcasm of the God of the Bible? And if you've done any public kind of ministry, you have met Rabshika. Rabshika's don't go very far in life unless they repent and get right. And Sennacherib is going to get in trouble by sending this big mouth. And Sennacherib has no idea what this guy is saying. But he sent him to be in charge. So we'll pick this up again, Lord willing, tomorrow night. Rav Shekel and Hezekiah and the God of the Bible.